So uh, in today's lesson, uh, in PHP part two, I'm talking about uh, control structures. Uh, we're starting from page number seven today, uh, starting from PHP selections. Okay. Now uh, a selection, you know this control structure already, the flow charts and all of that are exactly the same, right? So uh, no uh, particular difference from Python selections and PHP selections. Now here, since you have already have a certain amount of knowledge in if conditions, now the way uh, Python handles uh, uh, if conditions is almost the same as uh, how PHP handles if conditions, right? So except for a few syntax uh, uh, things here and there. Now in Python, you know that uh, in after the if condition, like if, uh, the keyword if, and then followed by whatever the expression or the condition, you have to put the colon, but in this case, the condition needs to be placed within a parenthesis and then your statements, each statement has to be within, um, statement in the sense each block actually, uh, the, the true block and the false block, right? True block in the sense if the condition is true, execute this. That needs to be within a, a pair of curly brackets and then uh, afterwards you can say else, just simply going along with else. There are only two uh, different uh, routes that you can take. Uh, you can take go for else and then basically uh, have the other code block uh, if the condition is false uh, do these set of uh, statements right here I've sort of combined else if as well you might recall we had something called elif in Python uh, this one happens to be else if right uh, and you can see that there is no space in between so it's like a combination of the two together and then you can have another condition here. If, this, if the first condition is not true, and then it checks for another condition, likewise, you can have a combination of else if statements. And then uh, finally, if none of those are, are uh, true, you can go for the else, right, without a condition there. Uh, so if none of the above is true, then execute this, something like that, uh, for the else, right? So uh, we'll try to do, uh, this is, the exercise number seven put there on page number seven. Uh, so let's, uh, let's try to do that. Right, so uh, <clears throat> now uh, I'll sort of give you uh, some in, uh, like idea about uh, where I'm going to save this and all of that, what we did last class. So anyhow, you know that uh, we need to start the PHP files with uh, this particular syntax, uh, right? Uh, again, I can save this. So uh, it sort of by default moves on to uh, XAMPP htdocs ICT class. So where is this location? It's like uh, on the on the C drive. Right, there is a folder called XAMPP. Now oh, I'm opting for the XAMPP implementation of the server. So uh, inside the XAMPP folder, there's a folder called uh, htdocs. That is where your uh, files needs to be stored. And then in, inside htdocs, I need to create a folder for my uh, particular uh, like exercises here. So I created a folder called ICT class uh, last week, or rather last class. And then um, inside that, I'm gonna save my file here which I will be accessing uh, through the web browser later on. Now this happens to be my exercise seven. Okay, and followed by the extension .php. Right, you can see the color coding, we call it the pretty printing uh, appears with the colors and all of that. Now uh, here, let's say uh, in exercise seven, it says uh, input subject marks and output the grade, okay. So it's not just a, a binary condition there that is like if this, do this, or else do something else. But it's a combination of else if uh, con statements as well. So uh, it's a bit more complicated like for the first one, but since you already have some experience with uh, if conditions in Python, uh, I sort of went along with this, right? Okay, so let's uh, initialize uh, a variable uh, in the sense now, this is about marks being compared against different ranges, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, so I'm gonna declare a variable called M, that is to hold the uh, marks, and then I'm gonna give a, a, a particular value, let's say 46, 
right? You can uh, might recall that uh, each and every statement has to finish with the semicolon. And uh, now I start my if conditions. If within brackets, I need to give uh, the um, the condition here. So I'm checking the, the variable value m against uh, now. Usually, if we go along with the normal uh, grading system that we have here, uh, it's like uh, more than or greater than or equals 75 uh, should get you uh, an A, right? So, uh, what I need to display here uh, is the character A, a capital A. So, uh, since we are displaying something or printing or out, uh, producing an output, um, we need to uh, sort of say echo. That would be your output, and say within quotes, uh, you can say a, right? So that's the end of the statement. You put the semicolon there, and then that's the end of the code block as well. That's it, nothing else, right? Uh, so you can sort of you know break it off and you know keep it something like this: echo a, something like that, and then basically go along with that as well. But uh, it's preference. No spacing does not matter, unlike in Python. Uh, spacing this is not an issue uh, in PHP, right? So um, Right now if it is uh, greater than or equal 75 uh, let a be printed um, If it is not Say else if we can check whether uh, So uh, The va the value of uh, dollar m is not greater than or equal to 75 that's what else means. So if this particular statement gets executed, that means like this is not true, right? If this is not true, only it will move along to the, the rest of the statements. Else if uh, $m uh, is greater than or equals to 65, right? So uh, just copy this for the, I can say B, right? If that is not the case, simply uh, say is it greater than 55 if so then print uh, c is it greater than 40 if so then print s so if none of this is true you can simply say else okay and say uh, echo Okay, now I'm not considering the fact uh, where like the input value can be I, like uh, something um, that uh, uh, that goes beyond uh, 100 or is something greater than 100 and something less than zero. I'm not uh, taking those uh, like conditions into account, just simply going along with the, the natural inputs. So. Suppose like the input field itself can validate uh, whether the, the number or the value inserted by the user is uh, between zero and 100, right? So input fields can do that in HTML, I've told you. Uh, but here, like, you know, I'm not worried about that. I'm um, just simply, whatever the value or the valid values uh, the user has entered, something between zero and 100, I'm just comparing. And then here it happens to be 46, right? So uh, now if I, save this and uh, to run this I need to uh, sort of uh, go to my server now to access the server I told you it's like local host type that in so when you do that you get this right so uh, I you might recall that we created a folder called ICT class right uh, and inside the ICT class folder, these are the files. I mean, some of the files I've just uh, put from my previous exercises, uh, classes. Uh, these are the files that I have, right? So then I, uh, the file that I am uh, creating now is called exercise seven, right, dot PHP. So I'm going to go with that. And it says S, right? Why is it S? Because the value that we entered was 46. And then uh, it sort of evaluates. This is the statement that it gets evaluated that uh, becomes true because is it greater than or 55? No, it goes uh, to the next uh, row, the sixth line. It compares uh, with the uh, M, which happens to be 46. Is it greater than 40? Yes. So echo S, 
uh, S will be printed. So if I change the value to something like, okay, 76 and save it, refresh here, it becomes A, right? So uh, that is how you can have uh, an if condition, a series of if conditions in the form of uh, else if and then else statements uh, to have your uh, work done uh, to compare, um, say like a particular value or a set of values against uh, particular given conditions, right? So uh, that is one way of implementing uh, selections. Another way of doing selections is to use a uh, switch case, right? Now switch cases uh, was not there in Python, right? A switch case is simply uh, like a compact way of writing uh, else if statements. Okay, it might not look uh, like uh, more com compact than the else if statements that we saw earlier, but uh, like when you consider a particular like a given scenario, uh, this is like, uh, okay, this is also somewhat uh, like not very flexible as uh, else if statements or as else if statements. Uh, okay, uh, the difference is between uh, the else if statements and the switch case is that uh, it's more compact. That means like, you know, it's uh, sort of not in, might not be in terms of the number of uh, lines. I mean, it's basically less coding, right? Uh, and then uh, basically the other part is, uh, it's, um, it's, it's not an advantage. It's actually less flexible than uh, the else if statements. Uh, why is that? Because in else if statements today, uh, if we sort of uh, look at the coding here, now you can combine uh, not only the value or the variable of dollar $m, but you can sort of combine. So if it is not greater than a, okay, for example, if it is um, greater than uh, or equals to 75, and then you can sort of take uh, the attendance of the person as well, okay? Uh, say something like uh, there might be another variable called dollar $a, right? And uh, if it is, if it equals to 100, right? So attendance is 100% as well. So then, uh, okay, so if we are combining two variables, you can put n there or else a double ampersand symbol. Uh, if both of these conditions are true, then we can give an A star or A plus or something like that. Understand? So uh, that might be the case. So uh, something like that. So it, it gives you more flexibility to, flexibility to incorporate uh, more than one variable and you know, uh, have your own way of uh, uh, dealing with the coding. But in uh, switch case, uh, you don't have that uh, flexibility, right? So if you're dealing with a particular variable, that's about it, right? You, but you deal with different uh, values, multiple values of, the, of a single expression, right? Now let's see what that is, okay? So I'm gonna do the same exercise, right? It's gonna, uh, call upon uh, something that I've done earlier. So here uh, you can see that uh, the same thing is there, dollar $m equals to 73, a value has been assigned to the variable. And uh, the way that we code is uh, with switch, right? So instead of saying if or something like that, we just say switch. And then we just say, uh, we are concerned about the values of $m, dollar $m, okay, right? So then we say, okay, dollar $m, and then say, uh, in, uh, you can see the different cases that I have given there. So if case one is, if dollar $m is greater than or equal 75, okay, uh, then the, the construct is altogether different. You don't have brackets, you don't have, what do you call, um, uh, curly brackets to enclose the code blocks or anything like that, right? So it's there. And then you can simply say echo uh, A, the character A will be there. And something special here is the break statement. So the break statement is very much the same in PHP as it was in Python. So what it does is it will break the whole operation and then it will take the cursor or the control out of the switch case, uh, the switch statement, and then basically resume the operation from outside of, it can, like, it's basically outside of this uh, curly bracket, okay? So it comes to uh, 
say like you know if it comes across uh, the break statement it will basically uh, resume the execution from line number 11 right 11 onwards okay so uh, that's what the break statement does you require break statements in case uh, in in switch cases because uh, if not it will sort of okay this validates to true and the rest of the statements will be executed as well so you don't want that to take place so uh, what you do is each and every uh, case or uh, a particular situation that uh, the variable dollar $m can be in, you need to have a break statement at the end of it. Now, it might not be a single statement like this. It might be having, say for example, it might be broken off and then you know, kept like this. There might be some other statements over here as well, right? That can be the case, that's, that's totally okay. But uh, generally what happens is, uh, like here in this case we have just a single uh, statement there right and then if i run that it's called ex8 me just uh, say ex8 right now uh, in this case we're looking at uh, the value 73 which is uh, obviously less than 75 but it's greater than 65 so it executes uh, b and then uh, basically uh, runs it. So uh, the thing that I've told you, say for example, if I uh, remove these break statements, let me just you know comment them out. You know the comments uh, basically, uh, if you if the interpreter comes across a comment, it'll okay. Sorry, uh, over here comes across a comment. Uh, that simply means uh, uh, the interpreter will uh, ignore that. And then that means like it simply ignores the uh, break statements, right? So if this is the case, it's like, you know, I've just removed the break statements, right? So if I save this and then run it, so uh, it does not comply with A because it's not greater than 75. Uh, so, but uh, let's see. Okay, so what happens here is that uh, it uh, prints B. Okay, this is the first print or the, uh, the condition that it evaluates to true. And the rest of the statements, it will simply uh, continuously execute. And then basically it will print B, C, S, F, and then even invalid marks, right? So that's what you get over here. So in uh, switch case, make sure that uh, all the uh, statements or the cases are uh, terminated or finished with the break statement, otherwise your uh, like the rest of the uh, statements will be executed as well. Now, uh, you can understand up to here, if it is now here, it's checking whether it's greater than or equals zero as well. And then if it is not the case, if even that is not the case, uh, we say default. It's what somewhat similar to the else statement in the previous uh, nesting of if conditions, right? Uh, what happens is if neither one of these uh, cases uh, are true, right it can uh, if uh, the variables value is none of this if it does not comply with any of these uh, uh, cases it will simply move on to the default statement and then print uh, whatever that we have uh, given within the quotations right so it will print uh, invalid marks in this okay so uh, that's how the case statements work so again uh, the difference between if uh, if else conditions and then switch cases uh, the switch cases are a bit more compact than switch uh, or other if else conditions and uh, but they are uh, like sort of restricted and limited in operation because it's just simply comparing a single variable or a single expression with multiple values right so that would be your exercise eight you can copy that down onto your tube on page number eight right Okay, moving on to uh, PHP loops. Okay, uh, there are a couple of different types of loops in uh, PHP. Uh, now in Python, uh, if you try to compare this with uh, the language that we already know, there were two uh, types of uh, loops. Essentially, we had while loops and we had for loops, right? Now here, uh, there are derivatives. You can see we have the while loop, uh, as it was in the case with Python, uh, that is known as a pretest because the testing happens before the execution of the statements. And we have something called a do while loop, right? So this is uh, 
a kind of a post test scenario uh, post test condition means whether you execute the statements and then you check whether this uh, the condition is uh, true right so uh, like uh, there are certain advantages and disadvantages i mean like you can interchangeably use uh, the two uh, the way that they operate is like sort of upside down uh, but essentially you can use both of this uh, to do the exact same thing right so uh, and then moving on to we have four loops uh, that is known as a pretest loop and it's also counted in the sense like you can have an exact number of iterations or repetitions to take place uh, in four loops and then for each loops uh, are essentially used to uh, access array elements right now you, re you might recall that for loops could be used in both uh, lists tuples uh, and strings to basically uh, iterate or else traverse through each and every element or uh, character uh, within your data structure if you consider strings here you can sort of move along from one character to the, uh, the other character using a for loop in python so it's very much the same here uh, in for each loops, we can we, are, we can actually use it to uh, traverse through arrays and then get whatever the elements that we need. Okay, something like that. So move on to the first one, uh, while loops. Uh, it corresponds to the exercise nine on your page number eight, right? So we have uh, the while condition, while, and then within brackets, uh, we are checking whether the condition is true. Uh, if the condition is true, uh, the code uh, is sort of presented within a code block. That would be the uh, pair of curly brackets. Within the curly brackets, you place your code. It might not be a single statement, might be a, a like a block of statement, might be a few. And then basically, uh, according to your requirement, you can uh, do that, right? So let's see how that can be worked out. I'll take a new one. I'm gonna uh, save it as. Uh, Exercise nine rather dot PHP. Okay. Now uh, the exercise nine is about uh, print the counting numbers from one to ten, right? Uh, printing a set of numbers one, two, three, four, likewise going up to 10 right so you do need a variable a counter and you do need it to initialize to one so i'm gonna go with dollar uh, c and then uh, initialize that value to one okay now since we have a starting point we can use the while condition there while loop while so the condition must be placed within brackets parenthesis we say dollar c Right, dollar C uh, is. I mean, the condition here is simply we're checking. I mean, as if in the previous cases when we did Python and all that, it's very much the same as uh, the previous uh, experiences. We check whether C. I mean, C has to reach ten, right? So we check whether uh, C is less than or equals to ten. So, right. So the idea is to move uh, the value of C from one to 10, and then we make sure that it doesn't exceed 10, uh, exceed 10 by uh, having this condition placed. While dollar C is less than or equals 10, uh, do what? So we don't have the, uh, the colon, as you would recall in Python, but we have a code block in place. So that's what I'm, uh, start, but I started with the curly brackets. And then uh, we already have the value of C, uh, uh, placed at one so one is a value that you do need so you can simply say echo it's very much similar to print echo the value of c dollar c right and then uh, according to your requirement if you want to break it off into the next line or else put a comma and then uh, have the values placed uh, horizontally you can sort of concatenate this with uh, something like a comma maybe right and uh, what simply it does is uh, it will print the value of c and it will put a comma at the end of it so this what it does is what the dot does is it's actually known as the concatenation it combines uh, the the value of c or let's say it's one and then uh, one and then the comma so it's com it combines the two and then uh, it sort of puts a comma at the end of each value 
and then we need to increase the value of c so you can go along with uh, dollar c equals dollar c plus one or else uh, there is a shorter much more concise way of doing that dollar c plus plus you might recall doing that earlier uh, uh, double plus dollar c is also fine here it doesn't matter because in case it moves on to the next line and then we can uh, that, that's about it right so uh, we can simply close the uh, curly brackets right save it and then let's uh, call it okay it's a uh, exercise nine right so uh, it prints the value of c or uh, dollar c and then puts a comma and it sort of increases its value by one uh, because of this particular statement the incrementing statement if you miss this out uh, it'll probably re, uh, sort of understand it will be a never-ending set of loops just for the sake of understanding it's just do this so what happens here with it, it it sort of misses out on the incrementing part so it'll print c and then c is holding one uh, it goes up again is one less than 10 yes it prints one again is one uh, less than 10 it's always going to be one and one is always going to be less than 10 so it's a never ending loop right so if i uh, do this save it and refresh uh, yeah it sort of it doesn't uh, do the what do you call uh, the word wrap thing it sort of you know goes on horizontally uh, to be a never ending you can see the how the scroll by is sort of getting smaller right anyhow so that's that and then if i sort of uh, bring it back again uh, i can uh, sort of right let me just uh, okay right 10 so uh, also there you can uh, bring it down uh, after printing each value you can sort of uh, bring it down to the next line just by having a break tag because we're essentially dealing with uh, html right so uh, html in the sense this whatever the output of this is simply an html uh, document so i'm gonna save this like like that with the dr statement and then refresh so it comes down like that right so if i go to the page source it's just simply okay this is the value of c and then places a break statement two and then likewise okay so that's how uh, the output of this works out uh, so uh, the apache server processes this and then uh, produces the output and sends it to um, chrome or whatever your browser is uh, what is being sent is this okay right moving on so uh, this is for the uh, while loop exercise number nine so y'all can uh, just simply copy that down i'll uh, share the code with you uh, right now uh, are you all aware of this uh, thing called uh, github right gits and github that stuff right so uh, it's something uh, you can uh, basically uh, used to <coughs> uh, share coding uh, manage versions of your coding if you're working on a project so I'll sort of give you an ex uh, explanation as to what that is uh, sometime later uh, and we'll create some git accounts and github accounts and then uh, we'll see how we can push and pull uh, gits and all that right so let's do that later so for the time being let's i mean you can sort of save it in your local computer and then uh, basically uh, deal with uh, all of that right so i'll make the coding available in the lms uh, sorry for not doing that uh, in the previous ones and together with all of this uh, to exercise number nine we'll uh, sort of do that right okay uh, moving on to uh, the next one that would be <coughs> uh, exercise number 10 so rather than that uh, okay we have uh, the next type of loop that would be the do while loop right so in the do while loop there uh, it's about uh, performing the execution of the statements up front and then you check for the condition whether it is true 
right? Uh, so uh, it's almost the same as the previous case, but the difference is it's like sort of up, upside down, right? So I've just, uh, I'll, I'll show you what I've created some, somewhat earlier. So you can see over there, over here, we have uh, uh, PHP and then uh, we have a variable called count. Let's just uh, make it C for the sake of uh, consistency, right? And uh, you can see what has happened here. Uh, instead of checking for the while condition up on top, now we actually do the, the, uh, the execution of the statements, right? So what do we do? Uh, echo C and then have a break statement. So it'll bring the output uh, to the next line. So it'll print the sequence of numbers downwards, yeah? And then dollar uh, $C++ plus plus, and then while dollar uh, $C less than or equals to 10. So the same exact condition that we use, but instead of placing it here, uh, it's sort of over there, right? So what is the use of this? Uh, sometimes like you know, there might be a certain occasions where you have to um, say uh, like execute the, the statements at least once regardless of the state, uh, the condition, uh, the, the, the state of the condition, right? So in that case, it, it's like, you know, it sort of, you know, does this and then checks whether it is, uh, uh, it is, uh, what do you call, less than or equals to 10, right? Suppose like, uh, for example, if I, okay, let's just uh, save this and then uh, run it and see. Uh, okay, hold on. Right, uh, exercise EX10 actually. Okay, so uh, exactly the same output. Uh, so it's not, uh, it's pre it's basically the new, new file, but uh, the output doesn't change. So uh, just for the uh, sake of fun, let's uh, just make it uh, 11, right? So uh, now what happens is uh, C is now holding the value 11. This is to basically contrast between the, the normal while loop and the do while loop, right? So uh, C equals to 11 and uh, the condition is over here, right? The checking of the condition whether it's less than or equals 10 happens at the end of it. And uh, what happens is 11 uh, will be printed. Echo dollar C, that means 11 will get printed and it will have a break statement as well. And then it will be 12 as well. Right, become 12 as well, and then only checks whether uh, C's value is less than or equal to 10. So by the time you check for the condition, uh, the value has already gotten printed, right? So if I just save this and refresh, shows me 11, which it shouldn't, right? Because only because of uh, my uh, construct over here, where the condition is checked at the end of it, it allows me to print a value regardless of whatever the condition is. Right. So basically that's uh, what that is with it. So for the, uh, I mean, it says in your tute, print the counting numbers from one to 10, just for the sake of uh, say differentiation, you can change it to from 10 to one. Okay, let's try to decrement this. You start off with uh, 10 and echo C uh, break, fine, move it down or else you can put a comma here. And instead of saying plus plus, you can say minus minus because it needs to decrement or decrease uh, the value by one. And the condition needs to obviously change uh, whether we can say uh, while C is greater than or equals to one. Because it's a decreasing uh, value. Let's see. Yeah. Starts with 10 and then goes along uh, to B1. Okay, so uh, hope you all understood. Uh, this is basically the do while loop, the post test. Why right? this is because uh, the checking of the condition is done at the end of it, right? Okay, that would be uh, exercise number 10 today. Moving on to uh, for loops, right? A for loop, uh, as you might recall in uh, Python as well, 
it allows us to i mean py in python actually it's it's an exceptional case because uh, in most of the other languages for loop act in almost the same way but in python to print a series sequence of numbers you have to give the range function incorporate uh, say lists and tuples and strings and all of that so here it's much more primitive in nature so where what you do in the for loop is like you are combining the initial state of the variable uh, the counters initial value uh, the test counter that means it sort of determines whether to stop the loop or not and then increment counter simply implies uh, the next value to be uh, printed or else what should be the increment be like for example is it to add one or decrease one add five decrease ten something like that right so all of that can be done here uh, and then uh, so our, under each of the state of these uh, variable values uh, what needs to be done okay so let's go for a very simple exercise uh, let's take a new one save it as uh, exercise 11 dot php okay right uh, let's see uh, we have uh, okay in the exercise 11 it says where they print the counting numbers from 1 to 10 so exactly the same uh, output as the in the previous two uh, occurrences uh, we can start off with i mean we don't need to initialize separate variables it's just a single value to be printed so we can uh, start off with the for loop uh, for statement itself it's pretty confined if you compare it against the while loop uh, so the initialization part does not need to be done so if i just move on to that uh, uh, over here so you don't need to do this on a separate line so it's being done over here so you can simply say dollar c sorry uh, equals to one so it's within the same statement and then uh, something else that you did was this we need to uh, keep it uh, uh, the end condition right so it needs to be less than or equal to 10 so you can do that as well so dollar c less than or equal to 10 and then uh, the incrementing statements this part right uh, that is also a part of the uh, the for loop right so you can say dollar c plus plus Sorry, these must be uh, separated by semicolons, right? It's like combining three different statements in, into a single statement. And then again, whatever that needs to take place needs to be within a code block. And inside the for loop, uh, what we simply, what we need to do here, I mean, it's a simple uh, operation here. We just need to print the numbers from one to 10. So you can simply have an echo statement saying uh, echo, uh, print the value of C okay and then uh, connected to uh, maybe a break statement or else a comma okay that's it so you can save this and then uh, try to access that exercise 11 okay so ex11 is about printing uh, 1 to 10 so there we have it okay so uh, this is how the for loop works uh, you have again in the for loop uh, it's basically as i've told you it's a combination of three statements the initialization of the variable the end condition and the uh, the incrementing part okay and whatever that you need to do uh, within each of these cycles right it might not be just a printing of this it might be somewhat uh, more complicated say uh, adding numbers uh, adding 10 numbers maybe and then uh, basically calculating the total averages and all that so you can uh, i mean it's just a matter of say applying this knowledge onto uh, different uh, computational requirements uh, it's up to you to decide uh, what to be used right okay so uh, we'll not be doing all of these uh, exercises i mean we can do a lot but because of the time constraint and the bandwidth uh, concern we need to sort of uh, focus on you know whatever that is essential 
and then we'll try to sort of combine all of that and do something more complicated later on right okay so uh, moving on to the next uh, type of loop the last one fourth one is the for each loop right now the for each loop as i've told you is mainly related to uh, data structures the, the main data structure that we have in php is an array right so now what you can do is like uh, you can access each of the array elements right and then basically do something with it okay so uh, in the earlier case i mean in the last class i told you uh, basically to have a bunch of names uh, placed in your um, in an array and then basically sort it out and then print it so the printing part we had to uh, basically uh, access each and every element we were having about five names and then uh, we had to basically uh, sort of have five statements to print the five names without using a loop so let's uh, see how we can do that as well but here like uh, let's try to focus on the exercise number 12 at the moment uh, what we have is create an array containing 10 values okay uh, 10 values uh, and calculate the average okay let's uh, let's do that let's go with php and this i'm going to save this as uh, exercise 12 dot php right uh, now today, uh, since we are to deal with an array containing 10 numbers, uh, we'll have to first declare what that array is, right? So we can simply say uh, something like, uh, okay, dollar, just to indicate that, that it's an array, I'll just call it A, numbers, right? Equals, now you should remember how arrays were constructed you have to say that it's an array and then followed by the uh, the 10 numbers right six Sorry. okay uh five yeah 10 numbers Right, so we declared and initialized our array. We have assigned the values to the array. And uh, now, uh, since we are to deal with uh, calculate the average, so then we need to deal with the average scenario and the total, obviously, we need that as well. So, uh, right. So we'll initialize some, or rather, yeah, we initialize some variables for those two as well. I'd uh, say dot equals to zero. Uh, and average, uh, since the number of lines is a concern, I'll just put it here. Dollar average equals zero as well. Okay, so I've initialized the two uh, aggregate uh, variables that will be used in the computation later on but if you don't specify this uh, the total being a zero and average being a zero it will by default take it uh, in the form of a zero right so uh, like it will by default itself to zero so you don't need to be worried about that but it's good practice to initialize the variables right some languages do require you to do that so it's good to sort of be aware uh, that you know these things are there and then in some languages you don't have to they are really loose or else you know very uh, convenient in terms of coding so uh, php is actually one of them uh, more so would be python right so uh, except for the obvious fact that you need to keep the indentations properly uh, it's like uh, very in terms of the number of lines and coding and all that it's uh, fairly smaller uh, compared to most of the languages right so anyhow uh, these are the two variables now we can start with the for each loop for each right and inside the for each loop today what we do is like if you uh, go to the construct a little you can see uh, after for each you define the array and say not define actually it's already there uh, you refer to the array and then say as a, a, a local variable 
to refer to uh, each and every value in your array right so uh, we can say we can uh, uh, state or specify which variable or array that we are using and say as and then say a local variable something like dollar uh, n let's give it simple n so what what happens here is that uh, simple n or dollar simple n refers to each of these variables or other values uh, that are stored in the enum array understand right so in each cycle what it will do is access each of these elements uh, that are saved in the array right so uh, as always we need to start a code block and what we need to do within the code block is to basically access each of these elements and uh, add it to the total so the totaling statement you have come across this earlier so you have to say dollar dot <coughs> equals dollar dot plus dollar n so in the first cycle dollar dot is initialized to zero and then dollar n refers to 45 the numerical value 45 because it's implicit declaration put there when you give 45 it'll uh, take it as a integer value right so it's the numerical value that we refer to and then uh, that value will be added to zero and then uh, the resultant will be 45 again and then that 45 will be assigned to the total uh, variable right and uh, that's that that is simply what is happening in a cyclic manner on the second cycle now the total is not zero it's 45 now it's 45 plus the new value that we refer to is 56 in the second cycle Likewise, in each cycle, there will be 10 cycles because there are 10 elements within our array. So there is no specification, even though we're using a for loop, or usually for when we uh, state a for loop, we refer to a specific number of cycles. Uh, in this case, uh, it implies that uh, the specific number of values that we have within our data structure, that would be the array. So here what happens is for each item, uh, there will be a cycle and, it, and in, in each cycle each of these items will be taken and added to the total right so that is the end of our uh, code block simply just a matter of adding this and then you don't need to increment or increase it to the next cycle move on to the next cycle something like that is not required because the the for each loop is capable of doing that on its own and then uh, what we end up with is uh, the total all of these values being added to the variable called total now since we're done with that we can actually since we are supposed to calculate and produce the average we can simply say dollar average equals to uh, dollar total divided by i can go along and put 10 there or else say uh, here we know that we have 10 numbers suppose like there is a uh, like a form element uh, like an interface that allows the users to enter numbers on and on and on so there is no specific number of say it's not limited to 10 restricted to 10 3 or 9 or whatever but it's like sort of going on and on and on so in that case what happens is you need to <coughs> uh, sort of make it dynamic in nature say respond according to the user's requirement so what we can do is we can use a function called count and say uh, dollar uh, a num right so what it does is it will count the elements number of elements in the array called a num and then it will put it here so here it's it will be 10 if i reduce the amount of numbers it will ad adapt accordingly because if we put a hard-coded 10 over here uh, if i just say remove a couple of items in this elements in this even though the question says 10 values now it's actually having five right so if i divide it by 10 uh, the answer is not correct right we're not getting the proper average value so to make it adapt according to any given scenario we can sort of make the code more uh, versatile and adaptive in nature right so uh, we can do that and then uh, basically since we have the average with us we can use an echo statement to basically 
uh, produce the output echo can have a message as well to make it more intuitive uh, say the average is and uh, combine it with uh, the value of average right so let's uh, run it and see um, it's exercise number 12 Right, it gives me an exact value. I mean, these were not planned out random numbers. If I, let's just you know, change one and see, right? So make it 40 and then let's see. Yeah, it adapts, right? So according to this, and then again, let's try that out what I told you earlier. And uh, rather than, I mean, if it is dividing by 10, it will give me a, a very low value. Uh, and it doesn't in this case, right? So uh, because it's sort of, dividing by by its own number of items so this is uh, your program right hope you understood right let's move on to functions uh right uh a function is a block of statements that can be reused within a program now you might recall in your respective classes uh, I might have taken a person or two uh, to basically. Uh, I remember in Vattala, I uh, sort of took how they got there. got there. Like four people <laughs> uh, were taken in. Like you know, I gave them names. Makua, for example, Eros, uh, and then say uh, twenty-five and thirty, right? Ne uh, Eros. Uh, so basically, uh, what were you supposed to do? Add those subtract something like that. Ne? Uh, addition, division, subtraction. So I pre program them, add okay, add karam me pre program karano uh, to basically uh, add the two numbers that I pass on to them. So what I do is I call their names and then pass the values, and then they're supposed to compute the answer and give the result back to me. So uh, that is basically the idea of functions. Uh, functions keyword put it's not just confined to Python, it's like all over the world, like in all over programming applications, function carry the same uh, say definition and the operational uh, workflow, right? So here is also the same. So basically what happened this uh, happens is uh, you have you have to define the function in Python, you might recall. Uh, we had the keyword def, right, and then followed by the function name, but we don't have the keyword as such, but we simply say function followed by uh, the function name. <clears throat> so the function name can be anything that you uh, wish to give, and then within brackets you can uh, have it's it's not mentioned here though. Uh, we can accept a few parameters, right? The number of parameters is of uh, great importance. So you can have two variables, three variables, any number of variables. You can, and also you can you can not. Uh, so accept any variable as well. So you have to keep in mind when you're dealing with calling of those functions whether you're uh, sort of passing the correct number of parameters onto the function, right? So it's over here, right? So then function name and then you uh, can uh, basically have some bit of coding there uh, to do whatever the uh, operation that it's supposed to do. And then uh, the function itself is like a passive element. So I can program Erosh to add numbers uh, that I pass. So uh, unless and otherwise I call him by his name, Erosh2530, right? Uh, that person or else the function is incapable of passing me values. It's passive. So I need to call it. So the function call uh, needs uh, to be uh, done with the function name and then within the brackets, uh, any number of parameters that I'm supposed to pass to that particular function, right? So uh, that is uh, how the functions work. Let's uh, try to... Uh, Take an example and see. Uh, you can see exercise number 13 says, uh, create a function to convert centigrade values into Fahrenheit. Okay, let's, uh, let's try that out. So we can uh, take a new file. Uh, PHP. Uh, let's save this. <clears throat> exercise 13.php. So now today the first thing is uh, we need to uh, define the function. So uh, that needs to uh, the keyword function. 
and then uh, a name for our variable uh, like a function rather so the name for the function can be determined i mean should make sense to you when you're whenever you're calling you shouldn't say fun function one function two likewise because it doesn't give any sort of meaning right so uh, here since it is about uh, converting centigrades into fahrenheit so you can combine something like you can keep it shorter for the sake of uh, convenience you can sort of can uh, say um, uh, something like sen sorry centi to fahrenheit okay well or else you can just make it even more shorter and something like this c to f okay uh and uh, we do need the parameter in because we are converting the centigrade value that the user gives into fahrenheit right so we we need to accept a variable let's i'll just call it dollar c and this variable is local in nature uh this c cannot be accessed from outside okay uh, this is only confined to the function uh, limits right so uh, it's only between these two curly brackets that the variable called c uh, has its operational capacity it doesn't it cannot be accessed from outside this is called a local variable right so it's sorry uh dollar c is a uh, okay local to the function and what it does is uh, when the value passes value gets passed on to the variable called dollar c and that value needs to be uh, taken into the computational work right so we need to convert the centigrade into fahrenheit so what we do is uh, we can say dollar f equals to uh, the formula for converting uh, we have done it in classes most of the time and it's simply about uh, adding a 32 to uh, the value of c being multiplied by it's like actually multiplied by 18 divided by uh, 10 something like that i'll just simply multiply this by 1.8 okay so uh, the normal computational uh, operational operator precedence sort of takes place so before adding uh, you do the multiplication and then basically to the result you add the 32 so that will happen and then uh, <clears throat> basically here what i will do is uh, i will return very much the very much similar to python in nature so i will return the value of dollar uh, f again dollar f happens to be a local variable uh, only thing here means like uh, it will be the value will be rather than the dollar f the value will be passed on to whoever the uh, the calling statement is right now this is there i will uh, save this again exercise 13 and uh, let's sort of you know uh, run this and see what happens uh nothing right because uh, we have not even though we have defined the function today we have not called it right so the calling statement needs to be present as well so i'm just okay um let's uh, comment here function call sorry uh would be something like this uh say uh, c to f within brackets i'm going to pass a value say for example 38 okay right now okay now uh, okay let's run this and see i mean i saved it and run it refresh still no output right why is that the case because uh, even though i am calling uh, c to f now uh, this is the first statement that gets executed in the uh, on the whole line of coding line number 7 gets executed first right so it's calling that uh yeah exactly uh, yes much may uh, so we are calling that function right and we are passing the value 38 on to the variable c now dollar c is actually holding the value 38 right so 38 is over here more giving sorry being multiplied by 1.8 and then 32 gets added to that particular result and then being assigned to dollar f a particular value will be there 
and then uh, what happens is uh, that value will be passed on to this particular location but the problem is uh, we don't get to see it right for us to be able to see the returning value we need to echo it right so what you can simply do is uh, you can just say echo and then do the same just a simple echo statement because we don't have any output statements we didn't have it earlier so that's why we didn't get an output not that the operational part didn't work out uh, it, it actually took place the computations did work out but the output was never given so let me just uh, refresh that and see okay it's 100.4 so uh, now since we have an echo statement, we do get the output there. What you can do is today, uh, rather than sending out a return uh, path to the calling uh, function, you can have the echo statement here itself, or else you can simply, uh, like what I did here, return the value and then, uh, I mean, you might not want to sort of produce that as an output, but rather use it for some other computation as well. So in that case, this helps out, this works out. Uh, but if you do need an immediate output, uh, then you have to have an echo statement in place, right? So uh, that is uh, uh, exercise number 13 about uh, creating a function to convert uh, centigrade values into Fahrenheit, right? Let's move on to the next one. Um, exercise number 14, uh, create a function to add two numbers, right? Uh, now, you might be able to do it on your own uh, for the sake of uh, understanding. I'll just do it long here. But you can sort of, you know, uh, combine several things together and sort of make a bigger or a much more advanced computational algorithm as well. Uh, for this, uh, for this one, I'll just, uh, for the uh, convenience of everyone, I'll just do it here. I'm gonna uh, save it up front. Okay, let's just start with this PHP. Save it. Uh, exercise 14 right now uh, the question is create a function to add two numbers now uh, should be fairly simple uh, it's an addition uh, thing that takes place only thing that uh, that is different is here you need two uh, parameters being passed onto it so I'll start with function and uh, we need a name for the function. It's uh, go with uh, something like add num and we're passing two variables today. So we can go with dollar a and can go with dollar num one dollar num two uh, something like that. I'm gonna go with dollar a and dollar b and the code block. <clears throat> right now uh, Again, as I've told you earlier, dollar $A, dollar $B, and uh, I can use a variable called dollar dot as well, just for, to keep the uh, the total. Uh, all of these variables are local in nature to this function. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do the computation here. Dollar dot equals to, I uh, can sort of guess what I'm gonna do. Dollar $A plus dollar $B. Okay, and now instead of passing this on to the calling uh, statement, I can just simply uh, echo the answer. Echo, sorry, echo uh, dollar. Can uh, even have a, a prompt as well, saying total and dot to concatenate it, and then say dollar dot. You don't need to have a return uh, statement, but you do need to uh, end the code block. And uh, we can now have a function call. Okay, and sorry. and say simply add add num. You can see that it's uh, giving me uh, uh, auto code completion as well. And then I need to pass two values onto this. Just for the uh, sake of fun, let's try to just pass one value and see, right? Okay. Uh, no, let's actually uh, sort of send out both the numbers and then we'll test out whether it works or not. 
Okay, so uh, add num and then 45, 67. So 45 goes to the place of dollar A, 67 goes to the place of dollar B. And those two values will be added and then we assign to the variable called dollar tots. And uh, so when you print it, you will uh, first print uh, the total, the string value, and then followed by the answer. And then uh, the statement or the printing part is done by the function itself. So they, it's not necessary for us to echo it here. It's just a function call, right? So let's, uh, let's run it and see. Uh, this is 14. Yeah, that gives me the answer total 112. It's uh, for the, yeah, what I tried to do earlier, uh, just pass one value and see. Yeah, it gives me an error, uh, say uncaught argument uh, count error, too few arguments to function. Uh, yeah, because it's uh, expecting to, then exactly two expected in uh, that particular statement, but uh, only one was passed, one passed in. So they give us the error as well that allows you to figure out what the problem is, and you can simply correct that and then it works fine. Okay, so that's about it uh, for today. Uh, uh, you are most welcome to sort of experiment out and do your own thing. Uh, I'll, I'll see you then. Okay, so uh, thank you and uh, God bless you all.